So one of the new features which has just dropped into Flutterflow is a really, really important one. I wanted to put a video together for you guys quickly to demonstrate how this works. It's all about caching your back end queries. Now I've put a quick Firebase sample together and I'm gonna walk you through it. And I hope you find this video useful. So guys, here's the email that's landed in my inbox today. And you can see here this backend query caching section. This bit here is the key point, right? So for example, inside a number of applications and likely to be maybe one of your own applications, you're gonna to want to make a query into a data set that is probably static. It's not gonna change particularly often. You just wanna query it once. You don't wanna query it again and again and again because that's expensive, right? So this is quite an important feature inside Flutterflow, which you can now utilize with inside your application. I'm going to quickly walk you through now this sample that I've created. So here we are in Flutterflow then. This is my application. Now please don't look at the design because of course it's not going to win any awards without any shadow of a doubt, but certainly we're here for the detail, okay? So what I've done is I've actually created two pages inside this application. We've got a home page and we've got a validate page. Now on the home page, we've got a simple text field and we've got a drop down list, of course, which is going to display a list of cities from Firebase. So if I just hop over to Firebase, you can see here I've got a collection, uh, I've got a city collection and then within inside I've got a number of documents and really all these are is just names of, of cities okay and what we're doing is we're populating this drop down list now we've inside the validate page I'm making exactly the same query into Firebase okay so let's run this application up and let me show you how it works so just going to type my name as Stephen in there and I'm going to select a city and just say Auckland. Now, this is where you need to get your kind of magnifying glass out because as I hit the confirm button, you're going to see on the next page, you're going to see the loading indicator on the drop down list. If I just hit confirm, you'll just see it very, very briefly. You can just see it there just happening in this sort of section, right? So now that's what that's actually showing us here is that we were actually making that query into Firebase. Now I'm going to stop that from happening, okay, because we're going to cache that that data set, okay? So if I go back to the application and you can see here that um, we're inside the home page, um, I'm just going to select the actual city here and you can see um, on the actual back end query I've got, let's just edit the back end query. You can see here there's cities, it's a list of documents and down here I've got some ordering that's taken place which is just kind of ordering the the cities into um, alpha uh, order but just down here this is where um, there's been a slight change now so I've got a single time query selected now because this is static data um, I'm just going to want to make that query as a one-off okay so that's it that's quite straightforward now this is where the new feature comes in okay so on the right hand side here is you've got this query cache setting okay so if you just select that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle this to say enable query caching. So I'm just going to select it. And what I've got here is um, you've got a scope. OK, so um, what the scope is basically telling us is that um, so regardless of how many pages I've got on my application, I'm going to cache this result. Um, application wise so that's the scope across the application so if you've got a number of pages and you've got some static information and you're not it's not too exhaustive so for example you don't it's not a huge huge data set then um, app, app, at app level might be a suitable um, option for you but of course you've got page level scope as well so if you are using that that data set on multiple occasions um, at page level then you can put it at page level as well but remember of course once you destroy your page inside your Flutterflow application then then you'll cache will disappear as well so for this example I've just chose um, app level so I'm just going to choose that and I've got a name in here called get app cities so you just put that in there and that's all I'm going to do so now that's the important bit of setting up the actual the, the query cache now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the validate page and I'm going to utilize that so I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to just select the drop down that I've got on here and I'm just going to um, edit the sorry just uh, on here enable a query cache and here I'm just going to put in the same thing. I'm just going to actually select now the get app cities. So when you choose app level, your query will automatically be available here. And that is all I need to do. So um, I'm just going to make sure that I've just set up my back end query there to make sure that it's been a single time query. Yes, it is. Right. So let's now put that to some test for you and let's see what we get. 
So here we are, I'm just going to put my name in again of Stephen and I'm going to select the city. I'm going to choose Auckland, I'm going to say confirmation and you are going to see there that I'm not seeing any load that's taken place. And just to kind of prove it for good measure, I'm just going to press F12 in Google Chrome here and I'm just going to go where it says throttling up here and I'm just going to put a slow 3G on, okay? So this will just hopefully try and slow my internet connection down a little bit just to confirm that that's not actually happening. So just go there, just go there and as you can see, we're not seeing any loading indicator at all. So that just proves the fact is they're actually caching that data set, okay? So I instantly always would say now that that is fantastic. That's the sort of technique that you would um, put in in general software development across the board. And it's so great that, um, that the Flutterflow team have actually added that in because that will just add a bit of a performance boost to your application if you're doing this kind of thing, okay? So um, definitely a big, big win there for Flutterflow team. So another little setting that I just want to point out here is actually on the back end query here on the on the home page of the form is this should override cache. So if there's any point in your application's life cycle that you actually think, actually, do you know something? I don't want to cache anymore. You can actually set an indicator. In my case here, I've um, and I can show you this, I've just got a little bit of app state here called override cache. So what I could do is somewhere else in my application, I could set that to be true. And then I know that next time that query would then be refreshed from the cache. So it just gives you an opportunity in the application to be able to refresh the cache if you ever need to. So keep that one in mind. That's quite a useful feature as well. So finally then, as a little bonus in this particular video, they've also announced some set and reset widget states. So what I've done is in my little example, I'm just gonna demonstrate this to you. So what you can actually now do is you can actually reset forms, okay? So let me show you that now. So we've inside my application, if I just put my name in again and I select a city, say Auckland again and hit reset form, we can reset our forms. Fantastic. Um, so just a little example there of that. Um, I can show you actually how that actually happens in the reset form. If I go up to the action flow editor, hit open, we've got this reset forms fields option now with inside um, the, the actions as a choice. And as you can see here, I'm just resetting the form fields here um, to be the name. And then here I'm just resetting the drop down fields to clear as well. So just a little bit of extra there from the Flutterflow team. That's going to be really, really useful if you using forms of inside your application adds a few usability enhancements to your arsenal of tools. So there we go guys, caching inside your application is a super important technique. It's been in software development for many, many years. You wanna keep an eye on the performance of your application because of course, as your application scales, you're gonna to want to start putting these tech seat to keep your application pretty performant. I'm so pleased the Flutterflow team have introduced this because it may seem small on paper, but actually it's really, really important to be on top of those kind of techniques and to introduce them as you develop your Flutterflow application. So please do guys, please do like the video please do subscribe to the channel because as the Flutterflow team introduce more features like this I'm going to bring them to your attention I'm going to put a little sample together for you guys to walk through as well um, and uh, yeah and hope you enjoy the content on the channel throughout so um, until the next one everybody we'll see you real soon